Hey everybody, Adam Savage in one of my favorite places in the world, the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Specifically, I'm at the Udvar Hazy Center and I'm walking down a row filled with rocket engines. It's an oft repeated sort of canard in a building like this, that it is a testament. And it's true, it's a testament to human ingenuity and hundreds of thousands of person hours of ingenuity and problem solving. But when I'm looking at a, a, an aisle like this, which is like rocket engine after rocket engine, I realize that like each one of these things obsessed a whole group of people for the better part of a decade. Like a thousand people went to work every day for years and years trying to solve problems with this rocket. And then they execute it and they use it and they learn what they need from it. And they move on to the next one. And probably 4,000 people go to work every day obsessed with this thing. I don't know what the numbers are, but you get my point. Each one of these things is a project that took over a period of the lifespan of each of the engineers and scientists and contractors putting that thing together. That's what I think when I walk through an aisle like this. Every one of these things is a brick, is a step on the ladder to space. Oh, that's a nice metaphor, yeah. Each one of these things is a step of the ladder to space. There's one I wanna show you here. This is a Falcon missile, but the kind of missile it is isn't as important as the fact that you can see there's hundreds and hundreds of pieces of string glued to it. And those are put on it for a really specific reason so that they can put it in a wind tunnel or launch it and film it and learn by how these strings move what the air currents on the side of it. There might be vortices that occur because of some of the way the fins are shaped that they can only learn about by having something attached to the side of the actual rocket. And I love this as a solution for visualizing the air currents around it because it feels like a Mythbusters solution. It feels kind of ludicrous. Like if your kid said, I think we should glue a bunch of string to this rocket to see its air currents, you might be like, that's a great idea. It is a great idea. Like that is how you visualize that kind of thing. Every time I come here, things like this physicalize the incredible process of getting to space in a way that just nothing else could. These museums are so important for doing that. They allow us to like wrap our arms around this stuff in order to understand it at, at a really physical and personal level. Yeah, just wanted you to see that. I've been here four or five times in the last few years, and every time I take pictures of this case, and I was doing the same this time, and then I realized, looking at it, that what it shows here, which is all these sort of basic pieces of astronaut equipment from Gemini and from Mercury and then from Apollo, is that I actually have in my collection replicas of every single thing in this case. Uh, I have a replica of an A7L. This is an A7L B suit worn by James Irwin for Apollo 15. Uh, I have an A7L, the predecessor to this suit, it has slightly different connectors. But I've got the lunar extravehicular visor assembly, the Leva here, I've got one of those. And I'll tell you something that took me way too long to figure out on my own, which is the bubble helmet and the gold visor helmet are not two separate helmets. I know they look like two separate helmets, but the gold visor one bolts over this one. Yeah. I, I can't even describe how how long it took me to figure that out and how like I rrr, rrr, when I finally did. But this is the brilliance is that Apollo suits were a modular system and you could just take this and bolt it onto here and you had this, there was no new solution for figuring out how to seal that to the suit. It just went on top of that. I've got two pairs of Apollo gloves. These are all replicas that I have, but it, there's something to me that's very satisfying that I could put this case, to, I could put a case together that looked almost identical to this. And in fact, maybe I will. I was taking pictures of the Mercury boots specifically because I love these Mercury boots and I'm going to try and replicate them. I'm reworking my Mercury suit right now. And I, looking at these, I finally feel like I think I'm gonna take on the cobbling of my Mercury boots. I'm gonna make them from scratch. I'm gonna find I, I didn't intend to talk about this in this video, but once I like caught these out of the corner of my eye, I realized it's totally on my mind. I'm gonna make my own Mercury boots for this next suit excursion. Even the Mercury gloves. I replicated those wrist collars last year on a tested video. We'll include a link in the description. But yeah, every 
Last thing here, I have got one of, except for, well, let's say, my, my Gemini era helmet does not look like either of these two helmets. So it's the only one that I'm not quite spot on. Yeah, I just thought you'd want to know. <laughs> I could make this whole case. I never get tired of visiting the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. I always find something new to lock onto, and the tail on display of human ingenuity is always inspiring. If you'd like to get a better sense of what it's like to stand in front of a space shuttle or visit the Spacesuit Conservation Lab, we also film this in virtual reality as part of the Tested VR series. You can watch this right now, either through the Tested VR app or on MetaQuest TV. Links and instructions are in the description below. Thanks, you guys, for watching.